Hey there, and happy, wonderful weather. Gosh, at least the first part of today looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit later, we might have some weather in the afternoon, but so happy to be with you. Gosh, first uh, session of live stream uh, in a couple months, had a great uh, spring session. Now it's time to get ready for that summer job search se season. It is in full swing right now, and we have to get our resume up to date, our LinkedIn up to date. You have to be ready to present yourself in a very new and different way. There's a lot of opportunity out there, so let's get going. Let me just share my screen here. Hang on one second. Da, da, da. Let's add this. Ah, there we go. Uh, I can come a little bit larger. There we go. That's a little better. Nice balance. Well, really happy to have you here today. Make sure to check out the entire series. We start today, but we've got a few different lectures coming up. Tomorrow, the same time at 11 a.m., will be the building your professional network with LinkedIn and how to use that for your job search. On Wednesday, we'll be doing really the part two to LinkedIn called career evolution, preparing for your career's next leap with social media marketing. That's really once I have a great LinkedIn profile, which really needs to be a sales brochure all about you. How do I get that brochure out of the rack? How do I get it in front of people? How do I get people looking at me? That's career evolution on Wednesday. Thursday will be interview intervention. And most of us need an intervention before our next interview. It's a sales meeting. And we really need to understand that. End of the week, I'm going to end with a live Q&A session at 11 a.m. again, the Ask Self Recruiter session. If you have questions on your resume, LinkedIn, interviewing, job search, whatever it might be, send your questions in send them to ask at selfrecruiter.com that's ask at selfrecruiter.com and uh, the best ones are always featured well let's get into today we have some really interesting stuff resume renovation and like the title implies this is not a little bit of cosmic paint or fabric or whatever we might put on the walls or dress up a little bit of makeup this is break it down to the studs let's reimagine what is possible if we're going to solve our resume issues, that that really requires a dramatic paradigm shift. We cannot get stuck in the old view of this resume or that's how it's supposed to look. You know what it's supposed to do? Deliver you the interviews that you are qualified and capable of getting. If your resume is doing that, probably don't need to change it. If it's not delivering those interviews that you know you should be getting, there's something wrong with your resume. Let's Let's fix it. Now, fixing a resume tends to require two different components. Sometimes we only think of like nice, pretty typesetting. And, and yes, we hope it's nicely organized and as pretty as possible. It needs to be effective more than pretty. And, uh, you know, we have to deal with the story itself. We can't tell this story the same old, dull way you've told it before. Um, maybe you're too emotionally close to your own story, you're going to have to have some perspective. So we're going to have to focus on both of these if we're really going to fix what's wrong with your resume, why it's not working for you. Now, we're going to have to show that also in this uh, emerging post-pandemic world, I know we're not quite there yet, but as we shift from pandemic to endemic, uh, we have to deal with the fact that we're still largely working remotely. Uh, if not full-time, certainly probably, or, or most likely hybrid. And that means you're going to have to communicate that you can work effectively remotely. And that very likely might involve some storytelling changes as you look to what you've done in the past to tell it a different way that communicates that remote aspect when, when things were remote, when the, the team was offsite or the resource was offsite. All of that shift in phraseology really sets you up to be a winner. Now, if you've never worked remotely, you might be in a little bit of a panic, uh, but you might think of all these different ways that you might have interacted with people offsite, or even as a speaker, presenter, teacher, running meetings uh, with team members all over the place, all of those things or conference calls, all of that can be an example of working remotely. Even something like today's video webinar is certainly working remotely. Now, this whole paradigm shift means it's not a simple like, oh, a little change here, a little change there. No, this is like tear down the walls and start again. It's that that worm turning into the butterfly, this, this whole metamorphosis. Now, if you haven't seen me before, John Krant, author, career coach, and speaker. You know, what I really do, besides giving these type of great lectures for the New York Public Library, for New York State Department of Labor, 
Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, uh, Harvard Business School Club of New York City, many, many others. Besides those talks, what I do is work one-on-one -on -one with clients, really helping them to elevate their career brand, helping them to manage their career brand so that other people see you of the same brand value you see yourself. And without really actively managing your presentation materials, that's your resume, your LinkedIn, and really even how you present yourself at outreach, they're not going to think of you the same way you think of you. So we a lot of brand management mixed in as well. Now, a lot of the ideas are in my book. I think it's a great book. You should check it out right on my self-recruiter website. That's over on Amazon pretty easily as well. It's really a wonderful roadmap uh, that covers resume, LinkedIn, everything. A lot of the challenges all learned out of my time on a desk as a recruiter. Seeing what people really did select, choose, react to, not what they said they wanted. You know, so I want you to think about you are the compass for your journey. You're the one that has to absorb all of the different advice that may be put in front of you and then select what is uniquely right for your path. A few things that will help before we dive in over on my LinkedIn. You can just click on my articles and get to some things like how your resume does not become resume roadkill. That's going to give you a little more piggyback onto what I teach you today or how to supercharge your job search and really get that thing moving, which is not clicking apply, apply, apply. <laughs> I'm a really big believer, actually, when you take control, you more or less quit applying online, quit sending into HR, unless you'd like to work for HR, of course, and go directly to the decision maker. It's a, it's a total game changer. Also, how to avoid the biggest mistake in job search, all the things that eat up our time, the only valuable resource we have as a job seeker. Now, I'll be giving the LinkedIn lecture live tomorrow, but if you don't want to wait, or if you'd like a more unique look at it, where you can see me large, the slides large, all that, this uh, New York Public Library funded a film uh, two camera film of my uh, lecture and it's uniquely presented right on my website about halfway down the page totally free and really you can use that as a start and stop tutorial as you build out a better LinkedIn profile yourself of course I work with clients as well really elevating to a level they can never achieve on their own becoming a self recruiter and that is what today's lecture is about as well as the entire series how is it we're going to become this self recruiter this recruiter that's in charge of one great candidate. That's us. That's us. <laughs> and really, it's their job to strategize, to plan, to think of the obstacles, to overcome each of those things, and really to help us along the way. Now, at the same time, that involves networking in a very different way. That's really LinkedIn and keeping one eye on the toughest competitor imaginable. Those four, five, six people that would scare you out of even going after that job if you saw them. We got to Keep an eye on those folks so that we can plan how to beat them. They may seem scary, but but we can beat them with a little bit of tactical work, a little bit of planning, because they suffer from ego and arrogance. They they, they go, well, who are they going to? They're going to hire me. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let me just turn up my display a little bit. Always nice that I can <laughs> see as well. So there's a lot of ruts in job search that we get stuck in, especially in resume. Oh my gosh, so many ruts of telling it a certain way. Those things leave us in a very unhappy, angry, uh, disillusioned place. And we have to learn how to recognize when we're in one of those ruts and step out of it, not simply go back and forth. We have to get over it and go after it in a new direction. So I want you to think of the usual customer expected. And just because it's been done this way in the past does not mean it should be done this way in the future. We have to think unusually, unconventionally, in unexpected ways. That's where we're going to have moments of clarity. As the light bulb starts to go off, the dots begin to be connected. Your job on the resume, as it is when you present yourself in job search, is to be persuasive. I'm not like a box of chocolates they get to choose from. Mm, which one should I have today? No, no. I am the primo selected chocolate that I am presenting, whatever it might be, whatever the dessert is. And you have to persuade toward you. You're there to sell you. Your job is to be persuasive. Don't just let them select. Now, why does a resume still matter? I mean, it's a digital world. Come on, come on. A resume still matters? Isn't it LinkedIn? Isn't it LinkedIn? Well, I'm glad you asked. LinkedIn is incredibly important if you'd like to become employed or employed again. Um, in the modern world, I don't know how you become employed without a LinkedIn profile. I mean, people will see you and go... Fantastic. Then they go to LinkedIn. They go, are you even real? You're not here. 
How can this background be real? So yes, we have to exist in the digital world. Don't miss tomorrow's 11 a.m. broadcast for uh, building your professional network with LinkedIn and how to use it for your job search. But I think we have to really understand why resume still matters. It tends to be, not always, but tends to be the first point of contact, first point of awareness about you. It is a sales document, not your personal glory page. It may feel like your personal glory page, but if you remember it's a sales document, my gosh, we're going to approach it in a very different way. We're going to use it to take control of the discussion, really to put those things forward about ourselves that will change the equation, change the mathematical uh, valuation of us. But let's talk about some real numbers here because you can't fix the problem unless you really have a clear view of what it really is. So you've got to understand the challenge in the first place. So by the numbers, which are not pretty, if this is a decent job, <laughs> some uh, that's a decent job. If that's a decent job you're going after, there it is, right on the screen. Thousand to two thousand resumes going in for any kind of a decent job. Now, are you listening? I didn't say a thousand to two thousand qualified candidates. <laughs> 90, 95 percent of these resumes are not right for this job. Why, why did they even send them in here? If you want to know, I can tell you. They saw this great job and they go. <gasps> They must have a great job around that one for me. I'm a great person. Send it in. They go, oh, we need this guy too. Clogs up the entire system as every decent job gets lots of resumes that, that don't qualify for that job, but maybe surround it. So good news for you. If you're if you're right for the job, you're mixed in here, but you're mixed into 1,000, 2,000 resumes, 90, 95% of which are not right. It becomes like snow blindness, resume blindness, few dozen, few hundred. I can't tell any of these people apart. And your resume is not communicated clearly in the first place. But this still is not a picture of the challenge. Who can read a thousand resumes, a thousand cover letters, a thousand uh, uh, emails that might be attached to that in addition to doing all their own work? No one that I know. Uh, but that's still not actually the challenge. The challenge is much, much worse than that. Because if it's an internal or external recruiter, it doesn't really matter. Internal or external, if their job is a recruiter function, they tend to be working on 10 open jobs at a time. So the question is really who can read 10,000 emails, 10,000 resumes, 10,000 cover letters. And I think you pretty clearly know the answer to that. No one. Although we might be thinking of that applicant tracking system. All right. <laughs> You're going to pin your future on the applicant tracking system. Uh, that probably means we're likely to stop at the bodega on the way home and buy a lottery ticket to plan our financial future. By the way, I occasionally buy a lottery ticket for a little bit of fun, but I don't plan my financial future because I stop at the bodega and get a lottery ticket. Same thing here. When you click send, send it into this type of nonsense system, it's a ticket at the bodega. Let's think about getting right to that decision maker. You have mere seconds to capture their, their interest, their excitement, uh, to, to have them jump up out of their chair. Ooh, ooh, get them, get them in here. Get them on the phone. I have to speak to this one for some reason. And it happened within seconds. So biggest mistake is we try to be cookie cutter. Perfect, 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 perfect. I'm just perfect. Oh my gosh. If you're perfect, I'll take number three. I'm paying number three less. No, you don't want less. I'll take number four and I'll take number two, number five. It does not matter. Cookie cutter, perfect, interchangeable actually, which means I'm paying less no matter what. You have to somehow achieve the cookie cutter, perfect, interchangeable, and also be somehow different, exceptional, special, bring something else to the table. That's also how you get your compensation on the right level. Now, let's get right down to resume. To be clear, we probably, you're not going to go home and spend like two hours, or you probably already are home, maybe, or watch, maybe you're watching from your office or home office, who knows where you might be in the park, anywhere there's a live feed, <laughs> but you're not going to spend two hours and have your brand new resume. You're going to have your first iteration of your new resume. And it very likely might take you three, four, five iterations or more or more to get to the right version. Don't stop too soon. So we'll, we'll walk you through that as we show you what to do on the resume. Remember that small changes change perception. It may not change things in your mind very quickly, but to a a reader that has no idea of who you are. These small changes on the resume change everything about the uh, absorption of your story. So let's get to that word story, which tends to have the connotation of something made up. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, I can tell you the same factual true story that is as, as dry as the Sahara Desert, 
boring, dry. I'm going to wither away. Or I can tell you uh, a story that's like a rich oasis in the desert with all this detail and water and growth and life springing from whatever you spin. Still has to be letter true. But in order to retell your story, you're going to have to close down and discover what it really is. You're going to have to close down for what I call inventory. That's a meeting with you. You're going to have to sit down and have an interview like you feel they are, an interrogation, a cross-examination, grilling. By the way, no secret I work with clients. When I'm reinventing a client's resume or LinkedIn, couple secrets. First off on the resume, which you're going to see right here today, not a single sentence on the entire resume. We're in a world where no one will read any longer, portend some awful things for our future, but that's the challenge we have to work with. So you're in a world where no one will read. Why would I put a sentence on a page in a world where no one reads? You need to learn how to distill down to concept communications, much, much more effective. And as you, as you grill yourself about everything from the very first educational experience and why and what happened and what else you were doing and looking under every rock and in the closet and under the bed. We're looking for every piece of story that you let slip by the wayside, threw by the wayside, tossed away as if it was nothing like, oh, get that off of me. All those pieces of story you have to rediscover. You can't consider how to retell your story without rediscovering it. You're so emotionally close to it. So this is what I do with my clients, which you should do with yourself if you're going to do it yourself. Otherwise, my services are over under my services tab over in my self worker website. But if you're doing it for yourself, you should come up like I do with about eight or nine pages of notes. Everything on those eight or nine pages of notes are going to be very emotionally close to you. Let's clarify again. Eight or nine pages of notes are not going to fit on a single page resume. More about that single page resume coming up. So these are all things that may be important to you, but you are going to have to separate out the normal important things from the ruby, diamond, emerald drop a perfume, the thing that draws the extra attention. So maybe grab a highlighter, go through in a very stingy way. What rises to the level of being resume worthy? Oh, maybe this one <laughs> and highlight it. Okay. By the time you get done very stingily highlighting across eight or nine pages, you probably have all the items that must make the cut for the resume. The rest is all in negotiation. Adding more content does not help your story. It dilutes your story. Less content that is all spectacular changes everything. Now, of course, be capable and qualified. But if I sense you're trying to prove that you're capable and qualified, I've lost confidence in you already. Remember that capable and qualified individuals, confident individuals, don't explain anything. They simply claim what the claim is confidently and they wait to be asked about it, which is where they prove it when they go, oh, tell me about that. Oh, I'd love to. And then they prove it. So really, you have to have the right balance of things that might, of course, showcase you to be capable and qualified without going too far, without looking needy to prove something. And then also include why are you interesting? What makes you tick? What drives you? Which could have something very, very close to do with what you do professionally or could have nothing to do with what you do professionally. But there's only two reasons I'm going to hire you. Only two of them, assuming I believe you're capable and qualified. And that is number one above everything else, chemistry, chemistry. How do I get you, get you? That's why those issues are so important because above all other things, if I think you're capable and qualified, chemistry is the deciding factor. How you fit with me, how you fit with my team, how I can imagine the work going. Chemistry is the hardest piece to recreate. Number two is confidence in you. And that's before the credentialing, the background, who you work for, what you've actually produced, assuming you're capable or qualified. So the confidence in you and the chemistry between us is incredibly important. And a lot of that comes from why are you interesting? What makes you tick, whether it's work life or not work life related? All of these things combined go into the brand of who you are. In my case, John Krant. Who's John Krant? Well, I'm this person you see here. I'm also a guy that likes to get out and do some pretty rugged hikes and likes to go through the desert and likes to do some of that kind of extreme stuff as the kind of antidote of, of living in the concrete jungle of New York City. It's all part of my brand. That part of my brand I showcase more on my Instagram, which has nothing about what I do professionally, but it showcases that aspect so people can connect going, who is that guy? What's he about? <laughs> what drives him? So you want to think about all the things that might shape your brand. And some of those will come from the notes. 
and we're going to filter it through a singular lens. Now, this is a lens I talk a lot about in the LinkedIn lecture. It's really about this need to answer a singular question. Why is it going to be the absolute best business decision they're going to make today if they choose to hire you, if they choose to add you to the team? Now, you could make that statement. Here's why it's the best business decision. Okay, but that's not very effective. It's like so like in your face. Why don't you just tell them things that naturally make them go to this conclusion? That's much stronger selling. If they come to the conclusion about you naturally in what feels like their own way, even though you might have puppet mastered it, fantastic, uh, even even stronger. So let's let's look at a resume. Now, this was this was a brick in the head that was given to me at the New York Public Library right after one of my lectures. Someone came up and said, uh, <laughs> I've been told all I can expect is more of this. <clears throat> and, and you may get a sense from today's lecture if you haven't seen me before, but I have a lot of energy, I have a lot of passion, a lot of adrenaline. And after 90 minutes of speaking, you can imagine it's all flowing through the veins. And I get this brick in the head under the lights and suddenly I feel like <sighs> I'm going to fall asleep. That won't be very nice. I better ask a question. Oh, what would you like to do? <laughs> I'd like to be in events. I'm like, oh, that's some, that's some good energy. Have you, have you ever done events before? Ouch. Ouch. I'm me with all of my background, and I haven't really detailed all of it, but we'll go through all that background sometime today so you have a, a basis. All of my career background, all of my industry background before, all the recruiting background before career coaching. And my gosh, I can't see the first thing on here says events coordinator because all like everybody else, all I can see is ooh, ooh, impressive law firm and more law firm before that. You know what? There is more law firm for you. And that's the reaction this person had. Even if you zoom in, does it really help? It doesn't really zoom, doesn't help. It's, a, it's this block of text hitting you. You really just think of, a, oh, you're a law firm person. Oh, law firm, oh, law firm. This is the same exact background. This is the same exact background showcasing the right part of the story. Nothing here is invented. It is the story. We were just showcasing the wrong story. I would argue here that the law firm is just as impressive presented this way. Uh, and yet right away, you can see the specialty that this person brings, which is not law, <laughs> it's events, which are transferable to every other field. Notice also that the sentence structure has disappeared, allowing the story to visually imprint in your brain. This is part of the transformation that we're going to have to go through. I mean, just, this is the part of the transformation that we're going to have to go through as we reinvent ourselves. We are this product, whether we like it or not. And we have to start thinking ourselves as this product. How are we going to get engagement, which is a whole lot closer to this style engagement, as we put our message out there? Well, again, where we started, small changes change perception. Small changes change everything. In terms of personal branding, yes, you're going to have to cover how, what you do on the resume, what you do on the LinkedIn, what you do on your email and cover letters, of course. But you're also going to have to handle this. How am I going to present myself in the future? Do I need permission to present myself a certain way or can I just present myself a certain way? I think most of us need to give ourselves permission to talk about all those things that can separate ourselves from others, all those things that make us special, why we're the one that needs to be selected for this. Let me show you, I'm going to make these just a little bit larger. I want to show you just a few resumes we pulled off the internet. And uh, these were over on Pinterest and, and someone was collecting resumes. I'm like, oh, I like resumes too. Thank you for collecting these. Let's take a look. And so I just want to throw a few darts here. And here we're going to bring these center for a second. All of themselves make them as large as possible. And I just want to throw a few darts so you understand what not to do. Almost seeing these will, and, and me throwing a few darts at them, will help you understand when I begin to teach you uh, on the other side. So, so when I look at this, Kelly here, first off, kudos to Kelly on his or her brand. Uh, you know, very large, big, you know, your name is your brand, big, bold, large Kelly. I get it. I get it. Now I'm not sure yellow was a really good choice. You know, it's hard to look at across the screen. Yes. I took off the last name just so it didn't need to be there. Uh, when we print it out, it's shades of gray that, you know, that negatively affects the brand. So, um, that's really the last positive thing I have to say about this. This resume suffers from something most resumes suffer from, and that is complete failure to consider information architecture. What if they're only going to read 20% of your resume? No, no, 15%, 10% for you. Which 10, 15, 20% would you like them to read? 
Well, guess what? You're in control of that based on how you put the information together. But you have to think about those things and you're going to have to adjust those things. Let's take a look at another one here. Julia. Can't miss that brand. Now, now I might say, look at the, look at the comment here down at the bottom. Now, I did not write these comments, but someone wrote who said the name had to be at the top anyway. Maybe, maybe I need to come on screen for this one. Uh, the name has to be at the top. <laughs> I'm a subtitle of my book is changing the rules. I'm a big believer in changing any rule that does not work for you. This is not a rule you can change. <laughs> this is a, they're expecting name, employer, title, employer, title, employer, education, your resumes in the stack to defile that. What this does when we bring this back to center, or maybe I can even come in this way. Uh, when, when we come back to center here, what this does is it just creates an information architecture problem. Am I supposed to get, start by reading at the bottom and then go to the top? How is this really supposed to work? And if I pointed out the only things I can truly see, those are the reasons I would not hire you. Dates. Dates are never a reason I hire you. Dates are only a reason I do not hire you. Now, while we expect dates, if you understand what dates do to you or for you, why would you put them over near the eye pattern? Name, employer, title, employer, title, education. It's a reverse half moon. Why don't we move those dates as far away from the eyes as possible? Like, don't look over here and put the story elements there. Actually cannot even see the employers and titles. I know, I know they're a little bit grayed out here, or a little bit uh, um, fogged out, so you can't really see them. But you know what? Um, the employers and titles determine almost every single ounce of the value that you bring to the table and not being able to see the employer in titles means I only think of you generically while I'm thinking of other people as brand level. Very, very important. Matthew, uh, Martin here. Gosh, I've seen this format so many times over the years, <laughs> but in so many books, um, you, I don't, I, let's cut to the chase here. I don't think it's worth 25% of the real estate to tell me your brand. That's your contact information. I get Martin's brand really great and strong, but, is it worth 25% of the entire real estate? And then to me, the rest of it's squandered. We end up with this two column uh, information architecture problem of do I go down? Do I go across? And if I really just tell you what I can see, I can only really see education, internship and personal skills, which are silly format labels drawing the attention. Martin's story is not drawing the attention. We have seconds and this is our personal branding. So no gimmickry to draw attention to the gimmickry, maybe a little gimmickry on occasion in the formatting to draw attention to your story. But that's not only the capable and qualified, but also the why are you interesting? What makes you tick? Now, a little more, a little more uh, clarification in your resume. That's about catching or peaking interest, their first sign of attention, obviously, sometimes even a tool to walk down the hall and to sell to someone else. You have to consider all of that. LinkedIn is really about closing the deal. How do I close the deal here as the very best one? So yes, I'm a big believer, uh, as you'll hear shortly, that a resume has to be a single sheet of paper. Whole story right there and dazzling. But maybe I can come a little larger now here. But really, the, the question here is, how do you take that skeletal system of the resume over LinkedIn and develop it into a full out three dimensional sales brochure with much more content on the LinkedIn side to knock the competitor sideways. That's tomorrow's lecture, by the way, at 11 a.m. Hopefully you, you tune into that one, building your professional network with LinkedIn. This is about influence and it starts on the resume. So go back to this basic brick that I showed you in the first place, the brick in the head that makes us, you know, uh, lose our focus. Your job is to somehow drill in and make all of this content come to life within seconds. So we have to have clarity and we also have to influence them. That's clarity about our journey, about all the things we bring to the table and really influencing them about the brand level of the product that you are. So you want to think about somehow transforming your story from that brick nonsense of text into something that brings it to life. That's essentially how you're going to create the engagement, which is a little closer to that. Five steps, five steps to create a winning resume. Here they are. You are a product too. coming back to every one of these, your resume, the new definition coming right back, your resumes, goals, understanding stacks of resumes. That's when I hit that darn 
submit button, apply button on occasion, but mostly submit. What happens there? We'll talk about that. And the last one is understanding the three second resume test. When you understand that test, you'll change your formatting. Let's go back to the beginning. When a company chooses to hire you, they're really buying a product. That product is you. We, we may or may not like that, but I think we get that day. So we have to think about, do we want to be that, that store brand product that, that, uh, uh, you know, it's really good on the price, but you know, the, the coloring of the, of the packaging is always a little off. The, um, the taste is always a little off. It's close. It's close, but it's always a little bit off. Do we want to be that? Or do we want to be the store, the, the national brand, the Kellogg's, the Folgers, the Coca-Cola? Um, so we want to think about those things. Creating a sales sheet um, that, that, you know, creates this desire. That's what people really miss about what a resume needs to be. Simple sales sheet to create desire. Make them jump out of their chair. Also a sales sheet that could be walked down the hall very, very easily to go, oh, I need to show it to this person over here. And suddenly I go over there and I show that person. All that is very, very important. Your resume's goals. Now, it's, it's mission in life, which is not its goal. Its mission in life is to deliver the interview. But to get there, it's going to have to have some goals. And that means a clear, clean, straightforward format. That's a format with the information itself will literally, literally jump off the page right into the reader's brain. They cannot miss it. Of course, we have to inform by educational background. Now, if you do click submit, you know, when we when we go on to one of those career sites. Now, let me be clear. I'm not a big fan of, of submitting or applying online. If you'd like to work for HR, that's exactly the department these typically go to. And that is your decision maker. But if you don't want to work for HR, I would argue to you that you're sending it to people whose mission in life is to rule you out. And their mission in life is to rule you out without possessing the knowledge themselves to understand why you're right or wrong for this role. They're going off a, a cursory list of a few things, trying to divine whether you're the right one or not. But if you got yourself to the decision maker, 15 to 30 seconds of conversation, that person knows exactly why you're right for this role or not. Can't talk yourself into a role you're not right for. But if you are right for the role, you'd speak the same language. You'd have the same background. They'd understand right away your value. Understanding stacks of resumes. So if you if you didn't listen to me and do send that that resume off to the click submit, all little capital letters that were so submissive, it's like a Friday night wait for that phone to ring. Hmm, hmm. Going to be a telemarketer when it does ring. But if we did send it off first, what happens? Well, your resume is going to go off toward a gigantic black hole in space called the data warehouse. Good news is, of course, it'll stop in front of someone on the way there. And you're going to be sorted into one of three stacks. And those stacks really are, maybe, maybe, might be somebody in here. That's the good stack, stack number one. Oh, maybe, maybe, but I have to come back and read again. I have to come back and take another look. Stack number two. Problem here is they don't actually come back to take another look. Why, why would I come back to take another look at these people that couldn't properly communicate their value to me in the first place? When I have all new, interesting, I have an incoming river of resumes over here. Why don't I just look at all the new ones? So, so really stack two becomes a dead end stack, just like the thanks, but no thanks stack. You're going to have to get your resume into stack one. That's part of the process. Now, the secret you may not like in doing that is you get three to five seconds of evaluation, three to five seconds. You're going to be in one of those three stacks. So you have to design your resume to get past that three to five second test in order to hit stack one. If you don't hit stack one, your resume is not very likely to be read at all. Your cover letters not very likely to be read at all. Email, not very likely to be read at all. We went over the numbers. It's really not possible when you look at the volume. But I'll take it further. If we're starting with 1,000 to 2,000 resumes, there's 50 resumes in the good stack, in stack number one. Who can read 50 resumes, 50 cover letters, 50 emails, and really it's times 10. Don't forget if their title is recruiter. <laughs> Still, we can't read it. So there's a secondary sorting process once you even made the good stack, and that's grab your name, Pop you into LinkedIn, not on LinkedIn. How comes the resume over to stack two? On LinkedIn, but wait a minute. It's exactly what I have on the resume. You didn't even understand the challenge. Out comes the resume over to stack two. By the time I'm looking at you on LinkedIn, I'm looking to be further persuaded. I need more of the story. Drop the other shoe to the story. I need to see it. Persuade me the rest of the way. That's the LinkedIn. So, Part of accomplishing this goal is also to make sure your story is concise enough that it can work within three to five seconds. That means a single page resume 
unless it's two. But you notice there's no time I'm going to be happy with a two-page resume. There's no purpose to a two-page resume except for someone that does not have their confidence. And the moment I see a two-page resume, I already know that you don't have your confidence and you move to the back of the burner. Now, on a single-page resume, what are we looking at? Your name, which is your brand, the last three employers and titles, your educational background. This is a listening test. Because after doing these in-person lectures, I'll hear people go, oh, John, John said just put the last three employers and titles. I did? When did I say that? I certainly did not. I said what we're looking at. If you'd asked me, what, what would you like on a resume, John? Oh, so glad you asked. <laughs> I'd like a resume to be complete from the time you entered the workforce to today. Ouch. Did you listen? I said that's what I'd like. I didn't say that's the right solution for you. If you've got background going back to the early 80s or even the 70s, we don't really need to see that. We can truncate some of that so that we don't give too much of a shock to people like, wow, still in the workforce. <laughs> don't give them that kind of a shock. So yes, we might balance some of it. But we're looking at the current or last three for time relevance of skill. Very, very important. So really important to center as much story on the last three, even though you may have things to tell about the earlier iterations of who you were as a, as a professional. Three second resume test. So if you have your resume, pull it out. It's just for you. Nothing to be shy about. Don't look at it. Don't look at it until I tell you. When I do tell you, take a look at it as if you don't know this person. Evaluate what you can absorb about this person in the time I give you. And then look back up. Go ahead and start. And stop. And for those that were actually watching rather than looking at resumes, you saw me do it. I gave you the full benefit of the doubt all the way from 2000, uh, 1001 to 1005. You're not getting longer than five seconds. You're in one of those stacks. Now, most people tend to look up like a deer in the headlights right after that going, ah, I can't tell you anything about this. You need to change that resume. It's not working. Now, how does this factor into your improvement process? Every time you work on your resume, you pick it up, do the three second test. Go back to the beginning, put them side by side, go back and work on it again. Three, four, five, six iterations. Don't stop too early. Get to the right version of your resume. It will open doors for you. I object to objective statements all of the time. You know, objective statements, core competencies, everything I've ever accomplished since kindergarten, collecting at the top of the resume. I get it, but it's just about a lack of confidence and desperation to, to try to stay relevant and employed. That's how it's seen. <laughs> you think it's like I'm an 800 pound gorilla and we're going, hmm, somebody that's lost their <laughs> 700 pounds of their 800 pound gorilla -ness. Um, So what you need to do is take all this stuff away and use that space for something I call the positioning title. That's exactly the job you're always sending in for. So that's the only part of the resume that's intended to change every single time. Let's show you a few of how those things work. Now, you look at this brick in the head here that I've shown you a few times now, and even, even zoomed in, like here's their original, you know, uh, profile. All I can really see is the word profile and professional experience. Wrong things are drawing attention from the very, very start. Here's their new version, by the way, high energy events planner, a specialist. What was all the rest of the nonsense for? Just tell them who you are as a product, clear, clean. These are some not the same person. These are some variations on some other people. Campaign director, media and PR, community liaison, or, or accomplished sales professional. We're going to show you this one uh, a little bit later and tell you the story behind it. Software, hardware, services. Oh, just what I'm looking for. Sure. Dead bullseye. Or you can go back to these resumes that don't really work. Your job is to somehow go into this resume of yours that does not work and somehow lift out the story. Somehow make that story come to life. There's lots of examples here. Use this as a start and stop tutorial as you essentially navigate toward bringing clarity to your own resume, shifting away from this dense style that really is so old, it just does not work. Suddenly the new story coming to life. Notice that the new story as they're sitting across the desk from you about to interview is so accessible that you also really end up with the cheat sheet questions for your interview. Oh, tell me about that. Oh, no, tell me about that. Now, this person was also so worried about getting mature in their career. They, they want to work in events and they cut off Martha Stewart living <laughs> off your resume or home 
uh, House, House Beautiful magazine, where they did uh, event-related things, did an event at the Guggenheim, or, or European Travel Life magazine, where they did event-related things again. So yes, you may want to truncate some of your story, but don't cut off the valuable sell pieces. Promised you a little story behind this one. Now, this is the after resume. This person came to me after working in their role about 10, 11 years, and they're like, hey, I've been in contract furniture sales. I had a great run, great run, like, you know, selling a thousand desks, I think. Great run, great run, uh, but I'm so done. I'm so done. Every time I send out my resume, they go, but we don't need a furniture salesperson. Why are you talking about furniture, first off? And so my, my, my natural question was, well, what would you like to do? Oh, I'd like to work in software, hardware, services. I'm like, oh, that's, that's a good field. I used, to, I used to place in that field as a recruiter. Have you ever done it? Yes, yes, like 15 years ago. Wasn't even on the resume. I mean, maybe it was like a tiny footnote of something, but no detail. It's like 15 year old experience. That's this person's challenge. How do I sell 15 year old experience? So what we did was we took really the, the last 10, 11 years, which was like the whole resume, shrunk it down to this one super paragraph of accomplishments. And we removed everything about furniture. Oh, maybe I can make this a little bit larger so we can analyze this a little bit. Let's see. Ah, there we go. So, so sure. You know, you may know Price Modern as a brand. I did not. Uh, certainly Hayworth, I, I certainly knew, and uh, corporate office furnishings. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Short of that, there's not one other word about furniture. It's achieved $50 million cumulative sales to date, ranked top 10 revenues every year since 2002, built a little strong pipeline. Every single thing that would make a sales manager jump out of their chair. And right at the top of the resume, we use the positioning title to tell them what we're going after. Accomplished sales professional, software, harbor service. <gasps> just what I'm looking for. They're thinking of me just what they're looking for is now they begin to look at my accomplishments. And further down the resume, that then gave us space to open up their background, which did include software, hardware, services. And of course, they're working in that field again. We have to think about how we're going to change the way we tell story. Now, here's the bottom of a resume. There's a few different things on here that I think would help you, and I'd like to teach them to you. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a, there's a whole resume above this, but bottom of the resume here, uh, we decided, well, let's let's cut the story at some point. Uh, and we decided to either start or stop the story with EDS, electronic data systems. And, and, and so we dropped the dates after that or before that, as you see. And EDS, if you don't know them, they are one of those employers like, uh, you know, financial services. Uh, you know, is there one special employer that, that if you work for them? Oh, sure, sure. Like Goldman Sachs. Uh, so every field has one of those employers that if they hire you, they think, wow, amazing. Okay. So EDS is one of those great place to either start or end your story. But look at these three prior employers, two of the three prior employers, that's PricewaterhouseCoopers and Kaiser Permanente. PwC and Kaiser Permanente, they rise to that same level. You've got three crown jewels just at the close, the foundational level of your story. By the way, those three prior employers added 17 years of extra background to this person. Anybody need to be 17 years older next time you walk into the interview? Well, not, not very likely. So in this case, you realize, wow, we, we could not not show those crown jewels. We have to show them. That is three quarters of one inch on the paper. You do not need loud screaming text to accomplish your goal. Everything has to be balanced. If EDS is 10 point bold, which it is, Hewlett Packard next to it, which is the parent is smaller at nine point bowl. And these three prior employers, they're probably down around eight point bowl, maybe even seven and a half point bowl. The titles are probably at half a point less than that. Location's probably down to around six. That's three quarters of one inch on a piece of paper. That's like the impressive drizzle on top of that dessert or the sprinkle on top of that drizzle on top of the dessert or that cherry on top of that, on top of that dessert. Everything where it should be. Something else to learn by the bottom. Let's take a look at the educational background and training. We have three universities here, and yet only two of them are equal. Sorry for this word coming up here. Uh, uh, the University of Maryland's is not a degree. That does not trump John Hop Johns Hopkins and, and College of Notre Dame, which are degrees. I don't care how much you might be jumping out of your seat over that PMP. Oh, yes, I get it. I know that PMP is the cell piece, <laughs> but it needs to go where it belongs, which is subservient to the degrees. It's like the cherry on top of the cake. 
just because you love the chair, you don't put it in the middle of the cake. You put it on top of the cake where it can be seen. Same, same way as this PMP will be seen here because it's where it needs to be. By the way, if you become so enamored with one of your acronyms, be it PMP, CPA, or any other acronym that you have, yes, you can cheat that and get it up by your name. Maybe you go comma, here's your name, comma, PMP, or CPA, or whatever your acronym might be. That's a way to cheat it and get it to the top. Community involvement. I mean, does that even belong here? Yes, it does. Character checkbox is really important. Don't forget to tell all your story. So, yes, don't forget, we have to look at both of these issues. We have to look at fixing the story element so it's not going to work. We also have to look at fixing the format. Let me give you sizing and font recommendations. Notice the story sentence structure has all evaporated. There's no not a sentence on this page. Your uh, positioning title is always the job you're going after. So that piece is intended to change every single time. When you get to the correct additional resume, nothing has to change. So let's look at some sizing here. Good Samaritan Village, Salvation Army, United Way, those are all the brands. So the brands are 10 point bold. Please notice the rest of the line, which is comma, location, and even date just off screen to the right. Those are not only not bold, they're not 10 point. Those are seven point, unbold. You can have a lot of variety, but you have to create a rule list. It's the consistency which will give it legibility or readability, along with the space between the letters, which I'm going to show you how to do, and the space between uh, the sentences. Very, very important. Or the lines is a better way to say it. Actually, no sentences. So I want you to think of what you see here. Let me just give you some different sizing. The sizing is not written down anyplace else, so I recommend you do write that down. Obviously, you can replay the video to get sizing as well. So... Let's skip that second line, which is a little unique line under Good Samaritan Village, and let's look at Salvation Army title line and United Way title line. So I like the title line, a half a point less than the brand. That means it's 9.5 in size, italicized, but not bold. If you make the title bold and you make the brand bold, the brand must be bold. That's where the value comes from. Uh, they both fight endlessly in the brain. They have to work in harmony. That's why you let the brand carry the attention. The title still pulls attention with italics, a little bit smaller size. And I like two points of space after the brand before the title. Now, I like four points of space after the title before the bullet points. Now, I'm going to show you how to add this spacing coming up with some, some visuals here in a minute. It's a little bit different on each version of the computer, but you'll get the concept. The bullet points themselves. I like those 8.5 in size. When you make them 8.5, they're going to get a little tight, a little hard to read. And once they're highlighted, you'll be able to fix that. And what you're really going to do is add space between every line simply by going up to format and down to paragraph and adding space. We're going to show you that coming up here. Don't want to confuse you with it. Uh, that special line, I promised you we'd go back to it, Good Samaritan Village. That special line there. Um, and I spent 13 years in Florida before I escaped. And, and once I got out, I realized um, every second or third mobile home or trailer park in Florida ends in the word village. There's nothing wrong with working for a mobile home or trailer park. But this person didn't go from great, great role, great role. Hey, what happened to your career right into the toilet? No, they went on to another significant employer. Can't have that disconnect happen in someone's brain. So we inserted a, a value line about the organization, the nation's largest non-for-profit long-term care organization, another significant employer. Do not use this line if someone knows that brand, like Salvation Army. But if they don't know that brand, you need to use this line because that's where all your value comes from, is the company. Uh, if you're using a value line, these are eight-point bold, and there's two points of space after it. Now, uh, on the top of your resume, on the contact line, should be a single line not stacked up like a layer cake. I think I can come a little larger for this section here. Not stacked up like a layer cake. So on the left, you want to start with your, your LinkedIn URL so that if you're holding the resume, not quite there, holding the resume, not quite there, click one click access to your full out sales brochure of your LinkedIn profile. City and state. I'm not going to hire you because you live at 123 Any Street. City and state is certainly plenty. Email address, cell phone number, not your home phone number. I don't care that you can't get your your cell phone in your home. It's the cell phone number that goes on the resume. Notice both things that I want are on the outside. Either pick up the phone and call me, easiest to get to on the far right in the Western world. You can keep looking right. 
or click on the LinkedIn profile on the left. This will help you dramatically. So let's make sure we have all those things in there. <clears throat> now, how do we add spacing? We have to think about spacing both between letters and between lines. So we're going to go up to format. This is how we add space after the employer, after the title, uh, after each bullet. So under format, we're going to go up under paragraph. This box is going to pop up and part of the box will say points after. Now, this is a little bit different uh, on, on all different systems because Microsoft sells about 20 different versions of the software. And surprisingly or not surprisingly, they all look a little different. You're going to have to conceptually get this and go in and find it on your system. Uh, let's go through the different sizing. So after the employer, it's two points of space. You simply enter two, hit enter. There it is. After the title line, it's four points of space. You simply enter a four, hit enter. After each bullet, you highlight the entire bullet set and you go in here and you type in 1.75 points of space. And magically, you just get this little extra breathing room after every bullet returns the readability. That is how you add space uh, after every line. Now, if you need to add space between the characters and, and one good place you're going to need to add it is the contact line. That contact line of LinkedIn URL and, and city state and email and phone number that should be seven point. Whoa, whoa, what? Seven point. Yes, it's not for you. Don't think about it. Seven point. It's going to get really tight and hard to read at seven point. You're going to use this technique simply to spread out the characters. So here we go up under font. Now we get the font window. We click advanced and we're going to expand uh, the character spacing by one, two or three points until it spreads out. Don't forget, you're going to have to go through three, four, five iterations to get to the right version. Uh, think about your work pedigree, who you've worked for, the, how that affects the three to five seconds. You may be getting close on this valuation, but understand we're looking at the quality of these companies, right or wrong, right or wrong, quality of these companies, uh, titles and accomplishments, even though I said we wouldn't really look at that, plus educational background. Here's the proof, by the way. Let's bring this just a little bit more center for you. I'll come over top of it here. So here's here's Todd Smith. We're, we're looking at him. You know, gosh, look at this, Nestle USA, Director of Quality Assurance, uh, Kraft Foods, Quality Assurance Manager, Coca-Cola Company, Quality Assurance Engineer, uh, University of Florida, BS Agriculture. By the way, if this is the resume you're holding, arguably this is the simplest resume in the world, and yet you still feel value from it. So so what do we get here? I, 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 get, uh, I get, has the degree, usually a pretty good thing, and, and oh, I see career progression. I see engineer to manager to director. Oh, that's really, look at these companies. These are great companies, aren't they? Aren't they? Now, when I would do that in 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 person audience, people, someone's going to go, "Oh yeah, yeah, great companies, great companies." I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> now, I work. I never worked food and beverage, so I really can't tell you. But I certainly had a friend and a client of mine that worked for uh, GTE Internetworking, which became Genuity and um, Liberty Media, Level Three Communications, Nokia Siemens Networks, uh, uh, Cisco Systems, uh, Motorola Solutions, and I can tell you. Every one of those companies is absolutely messed up beyond belief, like an internal meat grinder just grinding up and spitting out their employees of constant reorganization. Um, <laughs> so those brands are impressive, of course, and what you've exposed to. But th these could be just as messed up as those. I have no idea. Brand perception. Now you're beginning to get it. The brands carry the day. So, so yes, it's really, really important. If you need to experience this a little further, you're the manager that has to choose the person. You have one spot left. You have this Todd person here. And someone exactly like Todd. In fact, <clears throat> same University of Florida BS in Agriculture, same engineer to manager to director. But they did it for three food and beverage companies you've never heard of. There's like a million of them. Let's see, who gets that last interview spot? The other person or Todd? The other person or Todd? There's no question here. <laughs> Todd, Todd gets this interview every single time. That's the power of the brands. So out of this, my advice to you is to consider how do I move only uh, I know we're all facing things like we have to keep cash flow and everything going, but if possible, how do I move only to a better and better level brand as I move through my career? I can never go back a level in brand. I have to continually be moving forward in brand that elevates your personal brand, which is going to be incredibly important to really attaining what you'd like in your career. Now you saw a resume with essentially nothing under the employers and titles, value, value everywhere, but nowhere to be seen. So where you're really going to either win or lose is in your achievements you put under those employers and titles that have to be bullet pointed, have to have tangible, deliverable things, have to be absorbable.
hopefully you focus on all of these areas, which will really make them imagine what they could transfer if they, if they hire you. If I hire this person, I get this, or if I hire this person, I get that. In terms of degrees, all I'm here is for here is the truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Have you received your college degree in hand? Strange way to ask it. I learned how to ask it that way after I found out as a recruiter that people were lying to me. <laughs> so, you know, three credits shy of a degree, or I didn't pay that $168 fee. You know, that's no degree. So, so yes, you can put coursework toward field of study, not a coursework toward a BS and whatever. That's too close to the baloney line. There cannot be any perceived three-card Monty on education. Just coursework toward field of study. Get everything else in there if you didn't get the degree, but don't list the potential degree. In terms of designing your resume, just remember it's about really moving your brand forward. How are you going to get them to really... Uh, visualize your career path, imagine all the value that you've accumulated from working from project and whoever you work for. Of course, have to, again, inform by educational background. A last word about Word. You know, I have no special uh, love for Microsoft or Word. By the way, I'd love them if, they're, if they wrote great software, but it's, it's really some of the worst stuff on the planet. And, and Word's a great example of it. All these years, they've never, ever bothered to fix the basic problem. All they've spent all their time is figuring out how to get you under a subscription <laughs> for a word processor, which doesn't make any sense. Um, it's really simple. The preferences file that tells your resume what to look like stays as part of your computer. It travels to my computer, it opens by my preferences file. It may be very similar to yours. It could look like a completely different animal. When you spend all this time, I'm recommending in Word to make your resume perfect. At the very end, you need to watch my Headless Horseman video over my self recruiter YouTube site, and really it'll walk you through the process of converting it over to a PDF, locking it in state so that it looks perfect, prints perfect, no matter what computer looks at it, no matter what uh, type of printer prints it, no matter where it came from, perfect every time. Wherever you are in your process of improving your career and brand value. It starts with your resume, but then you're going to have to expand that over to the LinkedIn side. And you're going to have to emotionally separate from being so close to your story that you can tell it in a new, more effective way. If you need help elevating your career brand, all my services are over on the self recruiter website. Just click on that tab and you can look through my resume and LinkedIn packages, as well as career coaching and lots of other advice under the advice tab, which is the self recruiter ask self-recruiter advice blog. Thank you guys for joining in today. I really appreciate it. Don't forget we have other ones coming up tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'll be doing the uh, live LinkedIn lecture uh, on Wednesday, 11 a.m. We'll be doing the career evolution. That's the part two with LinkedIn, social media marketing. How do I build a social media marketing campaign that I can run in just two minutes per day, effectively drawing people to me? Interviewing, we'll talk all about the interviewing mistakes and how to prep even video interviewing for Thursday and a very special Ask Self Recruiter Q&A on Friday. Send in your questions to ask at selfrecruiter.com. And thank you guys for joining in today. Appreciate it. See you guys tomorrow.